Success is actually a short race, a sprint fueled by discipline just long enough for habit to kick in and take over. Gary Keller. DC Tribe, Josh Thomas, super glad to have you here. Be sure to follow and subscribe to the Do Zone podcast on Apple and or Spotify. Just a reminder, this podcast is brought to you by Unbreakable Teams. We fix broken systems for entrepreneurs so they can go farther, faster. You can learn more by going to unbreakableteams.com. Today's guest is Luke Charlton. In, 2020, uh, in 2013, Luke Charlton, a.k.a. the Aussie Hermit, decided to quit his comfortable six-figure-a-year government job, move halfway around the world, and start an online business as a coach. Luke, welcome to the Do Zone. Say what's up to the tribe and tell us something you believe is the key to getting stuff done that most people wouldn't think of. Hey, Josh. Yeah, the key to getting stuff done, I think... Um... It's something that I don't know if most people haven't thought of it, but it's not discussed probably as much as it should be, which is the ability to is saying no is just as important as saying yes, right? So saying like the ability to say no to things and opportunities actually helps you get further. It's all about focus, right? So um, I think the skill of saying no is underrated is what I'm trying to say. Um, so for example, I listened to this. Um, I listened to a lot of YouTube videos on like investing and um, yeah, the economy and stuff. And there's this guy that I watch, and he has a um, uh, like a, a side hustle course that he. So he had many side hustles over the last twenty years, like six figure side hustles. And he's like, you know, you, you know, you can just do this in in your spare time on a weekend. I thought, you know what, that that would be cool. Like to he he was like buying and selling tractors at one stage. He was selling like palm trees at another stage. And I thought, you know, maybe I'll buy a side hustle course and just do that kind of like in my spare time on, on the weekends. But then I thought, so that's an opportunity, right, that I could say yes to. But I thought at the end of the day, like, if I wanted to earn more money, I can just get some more clients, you know, for my for my own business. And that would actually be a much more efficient uh, way of of generating more more revenue. So um, that's kind of like just a, a simple example. But I think, um, yeah, the ability to say no in your in your business to opportunities that aren't going to lead you to where you want to go as efficiently as possible is is um underrated skill very important and well said and it's not said enough uh, as entrepreneurs we very easily get distracted and the no filter yep. in this regard helps keep us focused is and and really the question that you have to ask isn't necessarily should i pursue this now but a better way to put it might be is this going to help me achieve my goal? Mm, mm. And if the answer is no, well, then it's no. And if you don't know if it's going to hit your goal, then you got bigger problems. You got to go and figure out what you want. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. And so I'm I'm curious about your story. Um, you know, obviously with your with your your thick Texan accent, um, you know, you kind of stand <laughs> out on this podcast. So uh, you know where. Where are you coming from? I know you're the Aussie hermit, but uh, tell me, tell me about this transition of walking away from a cushy job and and going to the other side of the planet and and starting something else up. How did that get started? Uh, yeah. So I I was born and raised in Canberra, which is the capital of Australia, and I'd lived there my whole life. And basically, I thought, you know what, my my dad's from the UK, so I had my UK passport. So I thought, you know what, I'll I'll move to London. I'm single. I can kind of, you know, it'd be good to kind of get out of Canberra. And the other reason I thought, you know what, there's more, <laughs> my logic was there's more people in London than where I'm from. So that means it's going to be easier to get clients. That was like my thinking, but it wasn't, Makes it was sense. extremely hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so that was it basically. And so I just wanted a new location to try, you know, try living in a different country and, um, and, and then start a business. And the reason why I wanted to start a business, because I just, I, I'd been doing nine to five type work for about um, five years. And basically where I'm from, and this is with a lot of, I think, with well, particularly government jobs, which is where I was working, um, some private, but, um, you know, where I was, where I was working, like basically someone had to, if you wanted to move up, someone had to either die or retire basically. So you're, you're waiting like decades literally to like trying to move up so what would happen was i'd be really happy for the first six months in a role but then you would stop growing because you kind of just then it just becomes monotonous mm. and i thought i don't want to do this for the rest of my 
my life. I needed something different. So I was searching, searching, searching. And um, I came across um, coaching and I was kind of doing personal training at that stage. I thought, you know, I'm going to be a health coach. And that's what I moved over to London. I'm back in Australia now. I only lasted in London for like uh, about a year. <clears throat> uh, yeah. So I didn't like the health coaching, but I really loved the marketing and uh, the marketing and sales side of things. So I started helping other coaches because I found I had a talent for it. Um, uh, with their with their marketing as well, like with their copywriting and stuff like that. So, so yeah, so I've been doing that since it's ten years this year that I've been uh, self self employed. It's pretty cool. Nice, a decade, man. You know, a lot of people don't last that long, and so I'm I'm curious as as somebody who who walked away from, uh, you know, in in any country, if you're earning six figures, unless it's like yen or something you know like that's that's a decent amount of money it's enough to be comfortable uh, yeah so uh, what uh what were some of the things that you learned because i i'm sure even though you couldn't advance you also weren't hurting for paying the bills and then all of a sudden you're reliant completely on going and having to go and get it what are some of those lessons yeah. that you learned from from having to go and eat what you kill Ah, oh, where do we start? <laughs> um, so some of the, and this can probably apply not just to marketing and selling, but um, just business in general. So when I first like, you know, jumped in with both feet, basically I just quit my job and just went, well, I don't recommend that by the way. I recommend you kind of keep your job if you can and, and just work, build up your business on the side if you can do that. But, um, yeah. So what I, what I did when I did that is I started, you know, following mentors and stuff, cause we want to learn from other, other people, how to, you know, how to be successful. But what I do, which is what a lot of entrepreneurs and particularly coaches do is we chase kind of like bright, shiny objects in the beginning. So like there's this one special marketing strategy over here that has bots and texting or something. So we go and try and do that. And there's mm -hmm. this other super duper networking strategy over here. Then there's this webinar strategy and this new funnel strategy and, and all the new tech and stuff. And and that was it for me for like the first couple of years. I was just like chasing all these bright, shiny objects. And I wasn't really um wasn't really moving forward in any in any one direction. And that's why I ran out of money in London. I had to come back. I ended up living with my nan. She was the only one that would let me uh live with her rent free when I came back. So in <laughs> um came back broken in debt. And, but that made me realize, okay, like what I'm doing is obviously not working. Um, maybe take a couple steps back and look at like a, what, a, what is it that like the most successful people do in business? And then, and I started researching what people did before the internet and old school copywriters and stuff like that. And what they did back in the day is very similar to kind of like what we do today. It's just obviously a bit more tech on this side, but for example, what they did in the, in the past is copywriters, they would advertise a product in a, in, a, in a newspaper to sell it or whatever, or maybe a free guide in a newspaper. And they would build a list, right? So they would build a list of prospects and then they would sell that list. They would mail that list, right? And we do that online now. We just use email instead of physical mail. Um, but the point is what I started noticing was like these kind of key fundamentals and the fundamentals that people don't really talk about that much, right? So, which is like, get very clear on who your dream client is. That's like step one. Like what's the problem that you're solving for them? And then how does your solution fit in with that problem? Like how do you communicate your offer in a way where they're like, I want that kind of thing. So they're like the fundamentals. Then a simple marketing strategy, like building your list and then emailing your list regularly. So then I become more, more drawn towards kind of like the fundamentals or like the kind of boring things. But that's when I actually started to see traction. So if you were to apply that outside of marketing and selling, that really you know, applies to all areas. It's kind of like the tactics and that are nice, but it's the, it's the principles and the, and the fundamentals is what really gets results. The things that are not really sexy. So that's where if I was an entrepreneur listening to this is like, what are the things that I, I know I should be doing, but I'm not um, whether that's with productivity or marketing or selling or whatever part of building a team or whatever. What am I doing that I know that we should, most of us know what we should be doing, but we don't, we half ass it. Oh, I shouldn't research my market. Oh yeah. I, I had one conversation with a prospect. Well, is that really market research? You know? So it's getting in and doing the, um, uh, like the, the dirty work basically, um, with the fundamentals. And then that usually will set you up for success in whatever 
goal you're trying to achieve. So that's kind of like one of the my key lessons that I learned throughout the journey. I I love that. And it, it, what what it really says is, you know, I like the the fact that you said the tactics are nice, but it's the fundamentals that are going to make it work. You go and right. talk to you go and talk to any old guy uh, who's a pro, mm. and you bring him like your fancy new idea, and he's going to say, "Yeah, great." What's the pain that you're solving? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, what yeah. what does the customer know about this problem? Does the customer really feel pain when they mm. think about this problem, or is it just kind of a eh, okay? The yeah. way I the way I actually heard uh, Joel Irway put this is there's a difference between desire and demand. Mm. Most of us are trying to figure out what is the customer desire, but mm. People don't typically pay for what they desire. They pay for what's in demand. Right. If there's demand for something. I'm going to pay for that. If I desire, if I'm if I'm at the baseball park and I desire a hot dog, it may be too much of a pain in the neck to wade through the crowd and spend ten dollars on a hot dog. But if I'm yeah. like dying of hunger, I'm like, I'm gonna figure it out no matter what. I gotta get that hot dog. Yeah. 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 So and, yeah, exactly. in, right. that's that that's the first fundamental that I teach is like. Because I help coaches, right? That's that's my market. And they love, and like most entrepreneurs, like we love our product or our service, right? So when we go to talk to the customer, it's always all the features. Here's my cool, um, my cool templates that you're going to be getting. And you're going to get like 500 coaching sessions and all this stuff. It's like, the prospect doesn't care about that. You first have to talk in their language. It's just, oh, your marriage is breaking down. Yes, I can help with that. Oh, you're overweight. Oh, you know, you need more clients. So it always starts with the market. That's the first key fundamentals. Like what's the market want and and how do they describe their problem? And then you talk in their language and saying, yes, I can help you lose weight with this special XYZ diet is how we do it. And just start talking about the diet or whatever it is and talk, talk about the, the thing, the solution first. You have to first talk um, to their main pain point. I call it a high ticket problem because well, I'm in high ticket sales. So like, what's their high, what's the high ticket problem? What's that big pain point that they're willing to spend two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 or more to get solved? And so I'm curious about this. Uh, one of the things that, that you like to talk about and teach is about getting high paying clients by sending just one email every single day. And I'm curious if you can expand upon that a little bit. Um, well, it's, it's pretty much self-explanatory. It just is sending one email per day. So again, this comes back to my, my story about, um, cause I was chasing on the bright shiny objects. And, um, one of the things I learned throughout that, through that stage, again, another fundamental is most people are not ready to buy today. You know, there's a very small percentage of the market. There's like a, there's 3% that are ready to buy right now. Then there's another say six to 7% that are open to it. And then there's another massive 30% that aren't ready to buy right now, but they're kind of like searching and they will buy in the future. That next 30% of the market is where most business owners don't, um, don't focus on because that requires you to follow up. And every, again, this is one of those things, right? Everyone heard, okay, I need to follow up. I've heard I need to follow up, but I don't, I don't do it, right? So this is one of the things you, know, you should be doing, but you're, but you're not doing. So that's all I focused on was like, okay, well, if, if I just focus on following up, then I'm going to tap, tap into that 30% that aren't ready to buy, but will be um, someday soon. So I'm going to build a relationship with them now so that when they're ready to buy, they're going to choose me over the competitors, which they don't have a relation, all the other competitors that are just selling today kind of thing. They don't have any follow-up. So um, so I just say, look, just um, a really simple place to get started if you're looking for, say, clients, as an example, is to build your list um, with the right people have to be coming onto your list. So you need kind of like, you know, the right lead magnet or free guide or whatever you want to get them onto your list. So it has to be the right free guide. So you build the list, build your list with the right prospects or so prospects that have that main problem that you solve, right? So that's why it always starts with your market. And then you email them regularly. So I just send one email per day to my list with a, a soft call to action at the end. So it's a, the email has a story. It has like content, like a lesson, and then it has a call to action. So I call it story lesson close, SLC, story lesson close is how my emails go. And just do that once per day. Story, lesson, close. I love it. SLC. That's yeah, and you don't have to do email, right? So you um, could do that same format in a in a podcast, like a daily podcast. Or, I mean, I, I recommend daily um, if if you can because um, you'll build a relationship faster. 
you will um, you'll be able to put more offers in front of your market, right? So with every new episode or every new email, you have a call to action, right? So just by mathematics, you're going to be putting more offers out there, getting more appointments or whatever, getting more sales. So I recommend once per um, once per day. Um, if you follow that formula, then again, you th these are emails that people enjoy reading. And that's the big thing <laughs> that we'll stress here. They're not like pitch, pitch, pitch marketing emails. If you jump on my list, you'll see story lesson closed. They're entertaining, they're valuable, and there's no massive pitch in, in it. It's just a soft call to action. So um, uh, will you do that in email or podcast? Either way, I recommend leveraging follow-up, the power of follow-up to bring in more consistent sales on those fundamentals. Awesome. And and uh, so one of the ways that, uh, so we may be doing this a little bit backwards. So we're talking about building a list and keeping that relationship, staying top of mind, but how do we get them on the list? I know that you teach a concept called the, the, the million lead ad framework. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. So I just, um, <clears throat> as I said before, like you want to bring the right leads onto your list. So that starts with the first fundamental, as I mentioned before, is getting clear on your market. Like who's who's your market and what's that main core problem that you're solving for them? And then once you're clear on that, then you can create, I just use a lead magnet, like a free guide, um, a check, like a checklist or a template framework. I have a free guide called the nine, um, the nine Facebook ads that have landed over a thousand coaching clients. Okay, so it's just a, just a list of these nine Facebook ads. And then I do a little training where I break each of them down. But it's just a short free guide. And that attracts, like that is specifically designed to speak to coaches, right? So it's ads that have got coaching clients and coaches that are interested in advertising, right? Because they're ads, right? So that's, so I'm very clear on my dream clients. So I'm bringing on people onto my list that are interested in, in getting more clients and, and advertising. So the point is you get clear on your dream client and then you create a guide that's specifically designed to attract them onto your list. Now I use advertising, so... While we're speaking right now, I'm, my ads are going right now, bringing people on to, onto my list. You can do organic. Organic is a bit more of a slow burn and you have to be really consistent. But I, for time efficiency and scalability, I just like advertising. Makes sense. But that's how I do it. Awesome. And, uh, and then the kind of the final piece of this puzzle is uh, building with cold traffic. Uh, and is that, is that kind of related to your, your lead ad framework? Yeah. So the, oh, the actual framework. Okay. So let me, um, yeah. So I advertise to cold traffic. So what for those listening in cold traffic is just people that don't know who you are basically. So advertising to a cold audience. Um, so the framework that I use is the, the million lead ad framework. It's, it's basically a picture of a Facebook ad. It's got the, the copy at the top and then it's got the image or video and then it's got the, the headline. So the copy at the top, I use a very simple framework, which is the um, PCSC formula, which basically is just you start with the problem and then you go into your credibility and then you go to the solution and call to action. So an example of that might be, um, so you start with the problem, right? So P, problem. Are you a coach looking to get more clients with ads? Question mark, right? Or um, I've got clients, uh, sh let me start with... Um, Okay, so um, I have a client who helps kids with clinic like that are clinically depressed. So her opening sentence, starting with the problem, is like, you know, over the last X number of years, I've helped, um, you know, um, children who are clinically depressed to be, you know, to basically heal their depression. So I'm I'm starting the opening sentence by calling out the target market and make, making sure I'm speaking to that specific problem. And then the next line is just going straight into my credibility. Or the client's credibility, just to let them know that you know they're a real expert. Um, so that opening sentence I just mentioned had a little bit of credibility in that opening line. Um, but for me, it might be, "Hey, are you looking to get more clients with Facebook advertising?" Question mark. Over the last um, you know eight years, I've spent over sixteen million dollars on Facebook ads, and through this experience, I've discussed, I've you know found these nine top converting. Ad now I'm going to the solution. <laughs> these nine top converting ads that. Um, that have landed over a thousand coaching clients. The best news is I have put them into a free guide for you to download um, for free. Click here now. So that's the call to action. So the point is, it's a when you're giving away a free guide, it, it basically sells itself. You don't need a lot of copy. Um, so that's that's the PCSC formula. And then then you've got the image. 
if it's a free guide, I just recommend doing an image ad versus a video. You don't need a video for a free guide. Just a picture of you smiling is great. And um, and then the headline is the name of the lead magnet. So mine is like the nine the nine Facebook ads that land over a thousand clients. It's the name of that's the headline that goes in the Facebook ad. So mm -hmm. that's that's the framework that that's where I start with these lead magnet ads. Got it. And then you get that out and you test it and you see how it responds and if you need to tweak it or anything like that. Or have you found that framework? Usually, usually converts right away. Does a pretty good job of bringing that in. Yeah, I'd say ninety five percent of the time. But my clients said we did it converts right away and it's not so much because of like it's a an, an amazing like copy framework it's it's all in the name of the lead magnet if your ad doesn't convert meaning or it converts out of kpi meaning they're like the leads either people aren't opting in or they're too expensive then um it's almost always an offer problem okay mm -hmm. so it means people don't want your guide or your whatever and, and in that instance, you would probably, in, so you don't have to create a whole new guide. You'd try and rename it in the first instance mm -hmm. to see if um, coming at it from a different angle could. Uh, but again, if you follow like my clients, we follow the, that framework and for the right, we have frameworks for naming the, um, for naming the lead magnets as well. Uh, then um, usually it converts, converts right away. Yeah. And so I'm I'm curious. I'm I'm no stranger to ads, uh, but I'm definitely no pro like you are. Uh, I'm in a couple of business masterminds. Some of those guys are are listeners to this podcast, and yeah, and one of the reasons that people tend to stay away from paid ads is because they're concerned about how much it's going to cost. Now I know that there's a you know a cost per lead and a cost per sale and 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 all of these, but if you're running Facebook ads right now uh, in a competitive niche like this. How much, how much are you paying on average? You know, what is the typical person paying for a lead and how many leads in order to generate some sort of sale? Like what are the, what are the kind of macro steps? Yeah, well, everyone's going right to, everyone's going to be different, right? Depending on their offer and their market. So, but I'll give you some kind of generals Yeah, and, and the type of funnel that they're using, <clears throat> but what, um, yeah, so there is a cost to advertising and that's why you want to make sure before you start spending a lot of money on it, that everything's converting. So if my clients, whether my clients are earning seven figures or they're earning $5,000 a month, I always test low with their ads, right? You can test. That's a great thing with ads is you can test very cheaply to know that your numbers before you start scaling. So for, so for example, for me to test just the lead magnet is a hundred bucks, hundred dollars total to know whether the lead magnet is working. If it's not, I just turn it off and we can retry it. So it's, that's very cheap for the lead magnet. Um, and then generally you, on the, if, if you don't mind me asking in that hundred bucks, what are you looking for with that hundred dollar test? Yeah. So the cost per opt-in basically is okay. what, yeah. Yeah. So the cost after $50, I'll get a good idea of the cost per, um, the cost per click. It generally like after $50, it'll stay the same, but I like to spend a little bit more just to, just to make sure. Um, but I'm in the, I'm in the B2B market. So if you're in B2C, you actually don't even have to spend that much. Like if you're in weight loss or something, you'll know after $50 because you get a lot more clicks for your spend. That's why with yeah. B2C. Um, yeah. So for a lead magnet type funnel, like yeah, hundred bucks to test the lead magnet. Then on the next page, what I usually do with my clients is we, we will pitch a free call uh, on the next page on the thank you page. Um, but there are other funnels that I do for clients where we don't even have a lead magnet. We'll just go add straight to like we'll just pitch a free call like in the ad or like in a short vsl and then it'll go to a call so it's designed to get a designed to get a, a call so for b2b at the moment you're looking like if you can get a call calls between again it depends on the like for you a good cost per appointment might be um two hundred dollars because you've got a twenty five thousand dollar sale but for that, for a two hundred dollar appointment for a coach with a three thousand dollar offer may not be, you know, may not work out with the numbers. So again, that's why I say it's different depending on like your offer and how well you're converting in those sales calls, depending which will depend on what your KPIs are. But for most people, generally, like for B two B, you're looking at like between a hundred to two hundred dollars for an appointment in there generally, and then for B two C, you're looking between say thirty to seventy dollars. Um, well, it's, yeah, but again, it depends on like what the price point is. Um, but those are like general generals at the moment. But this is like 2023. <laughs> I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure inflation's going to get a lot worse next year. So there might be double that next year. So we'll see. <laughs> right. 
Yeah. And, and so you brought up a good point, you know, it's, uh, and I, I wanted to see kind of what, what was happening right now, because I, uh, I have somebody else that manages that for me. I don't pay a lot of attention to it. I focus on a different part of business. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what's, what's interesting is, you know, a hundred to $200 for an appointment is great. As long as you can close a certain percentage and as long as yeah. you can still create a profit, like that's actually yeah, exactly. not too bad. I, I would pay a hundred dollars really yeah. to put somebody in front of me all day long to sell yep. any kind of product that I can make a profit on. Yeah, so there, there's going to be no shows as well though, right? So you have to take that into consideration. So let's say for numbers sake, like it's $100 per appointment, but you've got a 50% no show, just as an example, then your, your appointments are really $200. Yeah. Um. So there's the no shows. And then the best way to make your campaigns profitable is just to get better at sales, right? So let's say, um, you know, you're, you're closing one out of every 10 um, and you're, you know, your campaigns are at a three to one profitability. Well, if you can change that to a two out of every 10, so closing 20%, well, now your campaigns are at a six to one profitability just by increasing your closing rate. That's why closing is such an important, like it's such a valuable skill to have. And closing cold traffic, you really want to have a strong sales process um, because they're cold, right? And it's not like a referral where they've, they come warm and they know maybe a little bit about you. Uh, there's a bit of trust there. That person is much like I get, you know, clients coming to me all the time saying, oh, just, just book me appointments and I can close. It's like, okay, well, have you closed cold traffic before? Oh, no, I haven't. But my my closing rate for warm traffic is 70%. It's like, okay. But, mm-hmm. And then you, yeah. they get on the phone and they're closing like 10% of the cold traffic. And they, and and that's a, it's a good thing in a way because it actually shows you the, the weaker, the, that you're actually not communicating your offer in a way that's that clear. Yeah. or that compelling and you can work on these inefficiencies in your sales process but um the point is yeah just by improving your closing rate you can really make your campaigns like really really profitable so that yeah. and, and there's a balancing act to that as well I, I i've been i've been in sales that's that's my area like somebody else can gen- if somebody else can generate the lead you know i i'll take the process from there a right. 70% close rate means either you're basically an order taker or uh, your offer is not priced appropriately. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's, there's, there's kind of this yeah. balancing act where you, you need to be lower than that because you're probably missing out on a lot of cash. If you're closing seven out of 10 people you're talking to, you could probably charge more money. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. I haven't, I haven't, really, I haven't really thought of it that way. That's a, um, that's a good point. Yeah, so the, the, um, the clients I come across, they're talking about just for warm, like referrals, right? Which right. all of us are closing pretty high on, on our referrals. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like yeah, this... you're, that's, you make a really good point. If you're closing that high for cold traffic, you're, you're probably not pushing the envelope enough. Yeah. Um, what we've yeah. seen, yeah, what we've seen, and we've, we, I've just, I've just processed a ton and ton of t- data. Okay. And so yep. it's like 21% is like, okay, it's like, that's decent. That's a decent close. That's the average is about 20%. Like it's it's okay. Good. It's like, yeah. If you're yeah. coming in and you're closing one out of five people you talk to, you're like, you're not getting fired. Right. Right. And right. so once it goes a little bit north of 30, getting close to 40, that's when you have to start thinking, well, okay, it's like, it's a good ego boost. But then we start having to think about, all right, if I'm knocking out almost like every other person I talk to, mm-hmm. I'm probably missing out on a larger opportunity because I'm not pushing the envelope enough to yeah. create the opportunity for this prospect that they would really, really need. And I have to kind of always be pushing that. And that's that's the ultimate balance, right? Between, yeah. you know, if I'm closing everybody I talk to, I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't thought about it that way. That's, that's really cool. That's very interesting. Yeah. It, it, yeah I agree, it, I agree. And, makes sense. and so- uh, in your uh, in your ten years of uh, of coaching other people, what have you found is the number one reason that somebody succeeds, and the number one reason that somebody fails? Well, you only fail if you stop, right? Um, I, I right think um, for this, I can only speak from for my industry. Um, I think people get into coaching for the wrong reasons. They they when they get in, they don't see it as a career. I think when I got into it, like I, I don't know why this happened for me, but I 
didn't see any other option. There was never like a ever, ever a thought in my mind of like, oh, I'm let me just go get a full-time job um if this doesn't work out or let me like that i don't know why i just i guess i just i just saw this as a, as a career like there was no other option because i was really enjoying it i guess my mindset was like well you know um i'm just gonna make it work however that happens and i just kept moving forward and moving forward no matter what the obstacle was and so i think if you go into your business with that mindset of like well this is this is what I do. This is who I am. This is my career. Like, it's like, what else am I going to do? Then you will succeed because you'll just have no other option than to move forward. Like, yes, there will be setbacks, but you overcome those setbacks. So let's say the worst comes to worst and you have to declare bankruptcy. Okay. You declare bankruptcy. It doesn't mean that you can't continue going. You know, there are, there are ways to continue to move forward even after a bankruptcy. I guess it does slow you down quite a bit, but if you see this as what you're meant to do, then you just keep you just keep moving forward. So I think it's again it's, it's always that mindset thing, right? It's it's always mindset. If you have the mindset of this is my career, this is what I do, then um, that's a good it's a good mindset to have. And then um, I think having a I think people expect results, particularly in coaching industry, of getting like 30, 40, 50 k a month in like six months, and they've never closed cold. You know, they're they're new to closing, they're new to marketing, they're new to growing a business. And there's, as you know, like there are so so much that you have to learn as a business. I'm still learning every day, and that's why I, I love it. I mean, after ten years, um, and so having a bit of patience and knowing, yes, the results will come. Yes, you'll get to your thirty k month, but at the end of the day, like for me, like who who cares? Like you're doing something that you love. And it's as long as it's supporting you, right? That's as long as it's paying the bills. Like that's for me that that makes me happy. It's paying the bills. I'm doing something that I love. Um, and then sure, I want to get to whatever the next goal is for me in terms of monetary wise. But it's not a big. That's not like I just enjoy that. I think I think the message here is enjoying the process versus the goal. Um, you fall in love with the process and you'll be unstoppable. You're so yeah. Again, it comes back to seeing this as your career. If you fall in love with the process, you will a setback won't seem like a thing that you have to then you'll never have the option of quitting. It won't be even come into your mind. So I, I we had a few different answers there, but hopefully that answers your question. <laughs> pick, pick your answer, pick the one that works best. Uh, that's, <laughs> it's a, yeah, this is, this has been awesome. And, and I, I love, I love that you dove in and got really tactical with advertising because it's something that is really intimidating to a lot of entrepreneurs. And sometimes you, you made a point earlier in this conversation you can go the organic route, but it's going to be a longer fuse and you have to be super consistent. Whereas mm. if you set up a paid ad, you could be talking to a qualified prospect within minutes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and the the trade-off is you're going to have to pay a little bit of money and you're going to have to take a little bit of risk. But what what I think a lot of people don't understand is the organic method costs you time. And yeah, I think the organic method is actually a bigger risk. I think that's the bigger risk for me is spending six months on because it really is a slow burn for a lot of these organic strategies, spending months, even weeks, like trying to get an organic strategy. And the challenge with organic, because you get you get so few, like so little traffic, it's often hard to gauge whether your offer is how good your offer is or not, because you're not having that many conversations. You're not, you know, you're yeah, you know, even if you're just promoting a lead magnet, you're not getting many people opting in. So I was like, is is my lead magnet the problem or is it just that I don't have enough people looking at the lead magnet? And you're second guessing. And that's, for me, the bigger risk is going organic and and, ha- and wasting months. And I did it. I did it for like the first couple of years. So that's all I was focused on was organic. And that's what I was like, I was tired of the organic strategy and that's why I went to, to ads. So for me, the biggest risk is organic. Um, yeah, so I I, I think... Uh, even though you're paying like what 30 bucks a day on ads to test your ad campaign, that's much, much less of a yeah. risk than the organic. Doesn't mean you can't do organic, but I would first focus on, and that's where I differ from a lot of other people. I reckon that in the beginning, you should be doing paid advertising because you can find out what is and what isn't working with your messaging very, very quickly um, versus organic. It takes you a lot longer. That's why I don't like organic in the beginning, but it doesn't mean like I do organic, like I have my podcast now and other things that I do, but it's not where I started. I think. Or where makes, I'd recommend I, is where I sign up, but not where I recommend that you start. Makes a lot of sense here, and and so who is a great uh, target audience for you, and who should who should engage with you, and how can they connect with you? Um, anyone that wants to get high paying clients with advertising is 
generally I help coaches, like consultants, um, high ticket sales professionals is, is who I help. And I help them build a system that gets appointments from paid ads. And then we show them how to close those, um, those appointments. So I would say just, um, uh, let me see, I have a, a free guide called the nine. Like if you just want to get on my list and you can see my emails, but, um, my lukechildren.com is my website, but I also have a free guide called the nine email offers that get co get clients for free. Just go to nine email offers.com. That's the number nine, nine email offers.com. Nine email um, so you can go there or, or lukechildren.com. Okay, great. Awesome. And thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate you, Luke Charlton. No We're going to wrap up for here. Uh, and for those of you who are looking to learn more uh, about writing emails that convert, you can go to nineemailoffers.com to learn more about Luke Charlton. You can go to lukecharlton.com. Once again, if you want to keep hearing great content like this, be sure to follow and subscribe to the Do Zone podcast on Apple or Spotify. If you're looking to break through to the next level with your business, but you just don't have the time or tools to do so on your own, we've got your back. Go to unbreakableteams.com now to learn more. Until next time, remember, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. What are you going to do with yours?